Hey and welcome to this video. So before we get into this, I seriously have to thank you guys. Uh, thank you for all your comments, for all your subscriptions, for all your likes. This really means a lot and uh, I said this before, but this channel would be nothing without you guys, so I really, really appreciate. Also, before we hop into today's video, I just wanted to let you know that I'm currently building an online video course about trailer music. If you are interested, just check the video description below and you can sign up and get a notification as soon as I get news for you. So in this video, I want to talk about something that is very important besides the structure and the form of trailer music, but also uh, the arrangement and uh, an easy to recognizable melody and what I want to talk about is signature sounds. So what do I mean with signature sounds? So basically this could be just one note, just one little element in the track that automatically makes it standing out of the crowd a little bit more. So let's go. Okay, so as for this video, I just want to make it a little bit different because I want to play you the individual parts first and show you what I did specifically for each of these tracks here in the beginning to create these kind of uh, signature sound and then play you the full track. So let's first talk about this track here that is called Breathe. And uh, I think this is the most important track when it comes to uh, standing out of the crowd or, you know, giving that track uh, a unique character or an easy to identifiable uh, sound. So let me play you the sound itself first. It's, it's very soft. You almost can't hear it. But so what is this? This is basically me inhaling. What I what I did was just going close to the microphone and do some kind of inhaling sound by you know opening my mouth a little bit and for a minute something like this. So what I did then is uh, applying a little bit of decapitator and uh, I didn't you know uh, I used quite a bit so I hit that punish button here and the drive goes up to almost uh, to over six and then it sounds like this that's everything no reverb nothing just a dry uh, breathing sound with lots of distortion on it so let's hop over to the next uh, thing here let's just use the next instrument here um, I didn't name the tracks right so I just have to open and see what's going on. So we have Devastator here, and this is uh, one of the soft Bram sounds. I love these soft Brams a lot. They don't sound like these, you know, hard hitting Brams and that probably a lot of people are annoyed of, uh, especially when used too much. But these are, these, these sound really cool. And let me just play you the uh, original sound from the library. Okay, so it sounds like this, and then I applied a little bit of reverb to it by getting rid of, uh, you know, I did a little dump here at, what is it, like, uh, something like 30, 40 hertz, and I also dipped out a lot of the higher frequencies here, and it sounds like this. So it's just a tiny bit. Just wanted to make sure to not get a lot of that sizzling sound at the top. So the next thing I did here, let's crawl up. And I was using Devastator again. Oh my God. And uh, <laughs> I loaded the low sub pulse to uh, 0.1. You got many other sub pulses in here, but they are really cool to create some kind of a percussive, but tonal element. So what I did was, and you play, I didn't do any uh, additional process processing on this. It sounds like this. Okay, that's it. Next up in line, we got a patch from a library I really love using a lot. It's um, it's uh, from Audio Imperia, Artifact Reanimate, and this is a patch called Arthur's Call. So let me play you the the sound first from the library direct without any processing, and it sounds like this. Okay, so then I started off uh, doing some EQing. Uh, I used uh, Steinberg's internal uh, EQ because, I don't know, maybe I just wanted to test it out, but to be honest, it doesn't really matter what EQ you are using. Uh, if somebody tells you, you know, you, that you can only get rid of specific re frequencies by using a very, very um, distinct or a very, very special EQ, this is, I don't, I call this a little bit BS, but 
um, you can basically use uh, whatever EQ you want as long as you know what you're doing. So main thing what I wanted to do is just get a little bit of that high sizzle here and uh, some of the low frequencies. So it sounds a little bit more mid frequency like. So this is how it sounds now. Let's compare this again. Okay, I activate it again. That's all. Uh, the next in line is uh, a Waves MDMX. It's a, a one of three uh, overdrive distortion, and uh, you know it's it's also a screamer effect. So I use the overdrive one here, and let's play this with without, and now with distortion applied. So very thick, very nasty. Next in line, I used black hole reverb. Why did I use black hole? I simply tried it and I liked the result. I simply wanted to know that I just wanted to create something that sounds a little bit out of this world, having like a long reverb tail. And now it sounds like this. And especially because of the long pre-delay of 300, uh, over 300 milliseconds here, you get like kind of like a rebump towards the end. So that's it. And the next in line would be a patch. I think I tried Repro first, but I then used Hive. And you can see there's a little modulation thing going on here. Let me just pull this up here for a second and show you the used controller so you can see a little dip of mod wheel just going up at the end and it sounds like this oh, sorry let me play you the the sound first so there is a swell happening at the end what i did is applying some additional reverb uh, sorry a distortion i used the screamer here from the same MDMX series by Waves. It sounds like this. So keep in mind that what also happens is that the reverb that is coming from the synth gets distorted too. And this is creating some kind of like a unique thing, nothing really special, but just a little bit of an additional you know, additional spice on top. <laughs> so we have uh, another EQ here, and I also, uh, let me just play this without again. And now let's turn it on. So again, getting rid of a lot of high, no uh, high frequencies, low frequencies, and it sounds like this now. So basically more mid-range. So that's it for the beginning. So now let me play you the beginning of the track so you see how all of these elements coming together. Okay, so as you can hear, there is nothing special going on, no variation or anything. I keep straight with that pattern or I keep going with that pattern in the beginning for uh, these uh, eight bars here and nothing is changing, nothing. I just want to burn these eight bars into the listener's head. So this kind of signature sound is there and I think or I believe or I hope the next time somebody's hearing that track, they can instantly connect it and it sounds more familiar in some way. So now let me play you the full track and I just realized that basically the entire track is based on this one signature element.
So I would totally love to do these videos three to six hours long, but I just wanted to focus on this one thing about creating signature sounds because I think it's very important to not just take care of the arrangement, the structure and some um, easy to re recognizable melody, but also creating some individual character, something that is there that, that sounds unique that nobody has. Because A, I think it helps to create attention towards a track, uh, may it be from the listener, from uh, the viewer of a trailer, but also uh, most important for the cutter that is looking through all kinds of tracks uh, during the day and just stopping at your track and saying, hey, what is this element? This sounds cool. This totally fits into the trailer. I just have to cut. So thanks again for your time. Thanks again for watching this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I would be really happy about this. Subscribe to my channel. If you haven't, there will be way more videos coming about the entire album. Also, if you have any questions and comments of what you want to see next, what you want to talk specifically about, just let me know in the comments. I try to answer them all. Sometimes it's not possible, but I do my best. And as always, thank you for watching and see you on my next one. Bye.